What's he doing? You could? No, but any pies in here? Is that what you're saying? No pies today, unfortunately. I would love a, I would love a pie now, to be honest. Well, Mike, we haven't seen you since uh, the Houston fight. So what are your thoughts just 48 hours out from one of the bigger nights in UK MMA history, I would imagine? Yeah, card's great. I mean, I'm in a great place right now, mentally and physically. And, I mean, I'm back where, first of all, I had my last win. And it was my debut. I'm back in my own country. I've got all my family and my friends around me and... I'm in a great place, you know, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm very, very happy and I'm just ready ready to fight and put on a performance, you know, Saturday night. You're obviously fighting Makwan Americani on Saturday. What do you make of him, him as an opponent, a guy? I think a lot of fans, they, they see his knockouts, but he obviously has very high-level grappling as well, a lot of submissions, and you obviously have a very high-level wrestling and grappling base too. Uh, typically, when we see these two high-level grapplers, it can turn into a striking match, like historic, like Matt Hughes w would fight like... Uh, Josh Kostrick, that would happen, for example. So what do you make of his skill set in the octagon all around? Yeah, he's, he's got great skills, you know. I mean, it is a great fight. You know, and like you said, sometimes the wrestlers, two wrestlers end up, you know, strike, striking much more. Um, mainly probably because of our ego a little bit <laughs> as well, because I don't want to get took down. I don't want to fail to take down. I don't want him to take me down, you know. So sometimes our ego a little bit, you know. You've seen it with um, Colby and... Um, Kamara. Kamara, you yeah. know, they, they didn't didn't really attack too much in the first fight. So I think that's maybe that's what happens, but and that's why they end up striking more. But yeah, you know, Macron's got good skill set. He's got similar chokes to me on the ground. And that's what's going to make it a great fight on the night. I think he's gone under the radar a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think people's going to be surprised when they see us walk out on the night and they're going to be excited to see that fight. And we're going to put on a performance, I presume. So confident in your hands against Macron, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, that's what I'm taking from my last fight a little bit mm -hmm. more. Coming up against somebody like Lando Venato was my last fight, and he's um, an exceptional striker. He's, you know, he's world-class in striking. He's come up against some great guys. And, you know, I, I hurt him. I hurt him on the feet. I definitely did hurt him with a, right, a couple of right mm -hmm. hands. So, you know, that's the kind of confidence I'm going to be taking to this fight. I'm going to put the pressure on. I'm going to get the finish. And finally, I asked Molly this just before you came out. Uh, back stateside, we hear about this golden era of MMA in the UK right now, presently. So can you feel that right now and during fight week from the fans? I mean, they haven't had a card since, what, 2019, and now they're getting the stacked card for their, their return. Yeah, the last, last card here was 2019, again, where I had my debut. So it kind of I had that feeling of my debut. I was excited all week and you know, buzzing because it was, it was my debut. And I'm getting that same feeling again. And, yeah, it's... Um, one of the best cards they put on in the UK ever, I think. You know, looking at this card, there's a lot of big names on it. And, you know, Tom, my teammate, Tom Aspinall, he's, he's headlining. So so that's nice again. You know, I've been here before when Till headlined. Um, but, you know, the, the results, I think, are going to come this time, I think. Because, obviously, last time we didn't get two results. But this time, I think we'll get the two results. Mike, just to the back here. Um, obviously, you are coming off of those two losses. You know, they didn't go your way. Do you approach this fight any differently? Do you have as you have done in the past? I don't approach it any differently, you know, and and, and I'll be honest, this this fight is so much more than, you know, me keeping my job off the two losses. This fight is um, to put on a performance for my dad. Sadly, my dad has been diagnosed with a terminal illness and he's going to be there cage side watching me, you know, on, on the night and that is what it means to me, you know. There is absolutely no chance that this guy's going to put me away to, on, on Saturday night. You know, you could put me in with the heavyweights on the main event and they won't put me away either because I'm there to put on a performance in front of my dad and, and that is what it means to me and that's the main thing. I'm going to dedicate this fight and, and this win to my dad. Has that given you any extra motivation then going into this one? Yeah, it's not going to put any extra pressure on me, you know, if that's what you're thinking. But it has definitely given me much more motivation. It's given me, um, you know, it's a little fire in my belly and I'm very excited for the fight but I'm very angry for the fight as well, and, and I feel that's going to bring the best out in me. And in terms of training for this, ha, ha, have you approached training for this any differently? Having had those two losses, is there anything that you've taken away from those, that you've maybe made improvements? I mean, yeah, obviously I've, you know, coming off two losses, I think coming off losses, the first person you need to look at is yourself. I think a lot of people do it wrong. They start changing gyms, they start changing weights and things like that. But I sat down and I thought about it to myself, and... I changed the fact that, obviously, I train in Liverpool, which I'm travelling four hours a day to get to, you know, because I train twice a day, I'm going to and from. So I moved into Liverpool this time and, and made sure my recovery was perfect. 
and, and I feel that's helped me a lot. So I just literally just moved away from my family for the last five, six weeks of my camp, you know, and made sure I made that sacrifice and I just lived, eat and sleep, breathe, training. That was it. <laughs> and last one for me, what, what do you think you can expect to see from um, Matt Kwan on Saturday night? You know, I mean, he, he is a little bit hit and miss, Matt Kwan, you know. I think he's um, sometimes he turns up, sometimes he doesn't. We'll see, but... It doesn't matter what kind of Mac one's going to turn up because I am turning up and I am getting that win. Thank you. Mike, this, uh, this fight, back here at the back, um, this fight was originally part of the ill-fated 2020 London card. And did you ever in your wildest dreams think you would get it back two years later with the fans back and all, all this attention? I mean, I've always, I've looked at Mac one even before I got into the UFC. He fought people I knew, you know, and um, I've always watched him. So I always... You know, envisioned that I was going to fight this guy. I don't know why, maybe because he had good wrestling and I knew I had good wrestling. I always thought we'd come up and, and, and get a match against each other. But yeah, I, obviously I got matched against him in 2020, a week before, you know, he got cancelled because of the COVID. Um, but I'm happy it's come back round again. It's a fight I've always wanted and it's, it's obviously a fight we've got now and I'm, I'm happy about that, yeah. How different a fighter is he from the, the Mac one Americani of two years ago? I mean, obviously, he's coming, he's coming in with, with quite a bit of pressure, you know, three losses. Probably, I'd say, he should have won a couple of those fights. You know, he fought a guy who was on a debut and took it late, and he lost to that guy. I can't remember his name. And then, obviously, Ebbers Ed 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 and Beb also, you know, it's a great fight, and he's, there's no, no, no shame in losing to that guy. But And then, Leron Murphy obviously knocked him out, and it was quite a bad knockout. So, he's probably coming in with a bit of pressure, this fight. I think he's, um, I think he's definitely a different fighter to a couple of years ago. And last one for me. I know media and fans, we make a big deal about having the hometown advantage and fighting at home here in England. I mean, obviously the fans are going to be loud and behind you come Saturday night, but how much of a factor is that in a fight for you? Yeah, I, I, um, I thrive off that. I mean, obviously, me walking out for my debut, like I said, a few years ago, I'll have that same feeling again. I'm getting the same feeling now, fight week. You know, everything's similar. I'm, I'm having that, I've got that excitement and... I think it's going to be same on the on the on the uh, on the night. I think it's going to be even better this time. Last time I was first on, um, you know. This time it looks like I'm the last one on the prelim so far. Looking at the card, so there's going to be more fans. You know, I've got my teammate on. There's another. You know, there's a lot of people. Obviously, there's one half of the cards pretty much British. So I'm presuming all their fans are going to be there too, and they're going to be screaming for me as well. So I think I'm going to thrive off that attention. I'm going to thrive off that that loudness, and I'm going to put on the performance of a lifetime. Hey, Mike, uh, just down here. How are you doing? I'm going great, thanks, mate. Um, so you alluded to this a little bit in one of your previous uh, question and answers, um, but my colleague Nick P on the Fight Disciples podcast this week also mentioned how you've been you used to travel like four hours just for training, and you know it wasn't allowing you to recover the way that you wanted to. So obviously now you've got a flat and you're living closer to the gym. Are you already reaping the benefits of that right now? And how much of that do you think that will be a factor coming into the fight this weekend? I think it's a big factor, yeah. You know, your recovery, obviously as I'm getting older as well, I mean, your recovery is so important. <laughs> I can train as hard as anyone in the gym, but um, if I'm not doing the right recovery, then I don't think it's great. So, yeah, recovery, and like I said, my sleep's been good. I mean, I've got two young, I've got three kids, but I've got two young kids at home, and they're climbing into bed in the middle of the night, you know what I mean? So I'm going to walk up in the middle of the night. Broken sleep for an athlete who's training four to five hours per day is not good, so I've had none of that. Um, you know, it's been tough leaving my family. I love my family and, you know, my wife's been great. She's, she's you know, sacrificed everything. She's had to sacrifice too to make sure she can look after the kids and make sure she's she's there for me. And um, it has, it's been it's been fantastic. And I feel, I'm, I'm cutting weight right now, but I feel great. I feel, you know, ready to go into my last bit of my weight cut tomorrow and fight, fight Saturday. I'm, I'm feeling great. And it was only a couple of fights ago that you were on a nine fight win streak. So how excited are you to remind the world who Mike Grundy is again. Exactly, yeah. Um, you know, that is, you know, I'm going in with a bit of a chip on my shoulder really on Saturday night because, you know, like I said, this fight's gone under the radar. I feel like I've gone under the radar a little bit. You know, I'm coming, I know I'm going to have two losses, but there was close close fights. There was great fights. So, yeah, I'm going in to make a statement and, like I said, put on a great performance. And just my final question, and on a bit of a lighter note, what's your most favourite thing to do after you fight? After the fight, eat. Um, I mean, this time 
this time I'm going to stay. I didn't stay in London last time I fought here, but I'm staying in London. You're not going to spend some time with my dad and my family uh, up in London, just a couple of days. And, and I've, I've made sure I've searched out some of the best best restaurants. Um, we're going to American Diner on Sunday daytime. We're going to eat there and get a big burger, I think. Good luck on Saturday night. Thanks very much, mate. Hi, Mike. Um, here. Hi, mate. Uh, Makwan is very well known for him uh, for his uh, Anaconda joke. How many times have you watched him doing that and how prepared are you for it? Yeah, I've seen him obviously do it quite a bit and I'm very prepared for it because he's got the similar cut chalk that I, I use as well. I, I love an Anaconda chalk. I love a Dash chalk. I love a guillotine. It's no secret. And... Again, you know, my ego kicking. I don't think I'll get caught with my 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 type of chokes either. So, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for them. That everyone. Mike, just a quick one. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's the 20 year anniversary of the first ever UFC London event this year, the brawl in the hall. On that night, Ian Freeman was in a very similar position to yourself. His dad was you know, in the hospital with a terminal illness. Yeah. He actually stole the show. He produced the performance of his life, stopped Frank Mir, um, and it went down in UK MMA folklore as the coming out party. Yeah. Um, is the stage set for you to do something very similar? Will history repeat itself? Can you set a tone and, and really push on for this next stage of UK MMA? I think I definitely can. I'm, I didn't know that about Ian Freeman. Obviously, I knew he fought in the UFC and stuff, but um, I didn't actually know that. But it does, it does um, you know... Having that that thing in the back of your mind, and you know he's gonna, my dad's gonna be sat there, he's gonna be there cage side, um, to have him there, and you know we don't know him anymore really, he's gonna be able to be there for, is special to me, and it definitely lights a fire in my belly, and it definitely is gonna bring out a different animal animal in me, it definitely is, you know, and hopefully that's gonna be a performance of the night, bonus to add as well. <laughs> Everyone okay, yeah. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you.